Good evening. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. So I'm Cindy Ryu from the 32nd Legislative District. I'm a, a, a new committee chair for the Community Development, Housing, and Tribal Affairs Committee, which is really, really fun. And I'm also co-chair of the Members of Color. And so I get to serve with represent, uh, Senator John McCoy. And when he was in the House, he, we used to sit on the floor together, way in the back on the Republican side. And so one day, I, a light bulb went off, and I said, hey, John. You're the oldest uh, immigrant to America, you know, 13, 14,000 years ago. <laughs> and I'm one of the newest, because I came to America uh, when I was 12 years old, let's see, 47 years ago. <laughs> so do the math. <laughs> so we share this land and this food, wonderful food tonight, and it's in a special place for a special purpose. This place is special and honorable because this is where we come together to make policy decisions. Tonight is special because tribal members from all around the state are here. And so I want to thank those who travel great distances and for all your stories and um, everyone who worked really hard to feed us and to make this event happen. Tonight is only special because you chose to come here and to hold this event. There are differences between the tribes in a state and within each tribe, just as there are differences between lawmakers, even those in the same party. And so when we give in to those differences, things do break down. To give our families a better life, our state needs to work together, all of us, because our differences don't make us weaker, when we are, we are not afraid to work together, our differences, in fact, make, make us even stronger. So I'd like to talk about how we can come together as partners and as sovereign nations to do big, hard things for the people back home. There's a Yakima legend, I'm told, and if I'm wrong, let me know, okay, that talks about the lost salmon. The rivers once were so full with fish, you could walk across them like a bridge. But people got careless and wasteful and took more than they needed. The salmon almost disappeared. People went hungry. It wasn't until they turned to the advice of an old man or perhaps an old woman and they went back to the old ways that the salmon came back. That story I heard is hundreds of years old and maybe even a thousand years old and yet it's relevant today. Our rivers, lakes, and waters are precious, but many of them are poisoned with chemicals and untreated sewage and pollution. We have a terrible and modern story that isn't a legend. It's a nightmare with radioactive waste leaking from the old Hanford tanks into the Columbia River. It's our job to undo that damage of decades of being careless and wasteful, and nobody can do this alone or in just one part of the state. This is something that we must do together using our different skills and different backgrounds. And while we are honoring the memory of Billy Frank Jr., a better way to remember him would be to do justice to his life's work to make a river so full with salmon that you can walk across them again. It's the same story with wildlife, wildfires and other challenges. The land isn't ours to do with as we please for short-term gain. We borrow the land from our children and our grandchildren. It's our jobs, job to leave the land in a better shape than we found it. The other duty that we have to our children is to educate them as we heard over and over again. We have a lot of work to do when it comes to education. The achievement gap is real, and so is the funding gap. Those problems, two problems, they are related. Schools in rich zip codes have better teachers. I have some of them in my district because they can offer higher salaries and they can attract the best teachers. Schools in rich zip codes don't struggle to pass levies. Their kids don't have textbooks that are 10 years out of date. Separate is still not equal. Every child, not just a wealthy few, deserves a great education. And this is especially important for our tribal members. You can't have a healthy local economy without healthy schools. And our kids won't do well in school if they are not healthy.
There aren't many dentists or doctors in rural areas. There are a number of proposals this session to improve health care for tribes. One of the biggest issues is dental care. We must work together to find solutions, including innovative ideas like more dental mid-level practitioners. And as Chief McLeod mentioned, today it's clear that our suicide rate in Washington state is higher than the national average, and it's even higher in small towns and tribal lands. And it's a huge problem for our young people. Here in the House and the Senate, we're considering good legislation to tackle this problem, including bills by Representative Tina Orwell. Laws alone won't solve this problem. It takes people who care, people who notice, who care and take the time to speak up when a teenager or a family member is troubled. So that's the last point I want to reinforce. You took the time to care, to come here and to speak up in your capital. For a lot of people, that's hard to do. This place can be intimidating. You might see the governor walk through the hallway, and there's always a sea of people in suits who look important. <laughs> but you know what? You are important because you chose to spend the time and the energy to come here and to make this event happen. And Susie Allen, you are important because good things tend to not happen when people stay home. Not one problem gets solved when people are afraid to speak out to people in positions of power. Our kids don't make progress and our waters don't get cleaner when people are too proud to sit down and work out solutions with people who think differently. So the best possible thing we can do together isn't to think of brilliant policy solutions. Those solutions are dead if people keep shouting and fighting. But the best thing we can do is to show up and listen to each other. You showed up today, you told the stories, and we, as we shared this food tonight, and I hope to get to get, I hope to continue to get the honor of listening to you. Thank you so much. <laughs>